I thought it would be useful to run a video of this Yashica FXD Quartz 35mm film SLR. It comes with a Yashica DSB 50mm f1.9, a prime lens. There's a screw-on filter here on the front that we can look at uh, the lens better without that on. And in just general, as you can see, the leatherette of the camera is very rough. It's in in bad condition, which is very common. The material that they used on this model and a few others did not withstand the test of time well at all. And so most of this model that you're going to see today either looks about like this or they've replaced all this material. So uh, that's not alarming that it looks like that. Um, what I thought I'd do, I have put some batteries in here just for test purposes and I thought I'd just step down through these shutter speeds. Here's a thousandth, one five hundredth, one two fiftieth, one one twenty fifth, one sixtieth, one thirtieth, one fifteenth, one eighth, one fourth, one half, one full second, and the bulb setting. And we can see the blades have been stopping down on that lens quickly. We can even crank it all the way down to f116 back to the one second. Now looking through here, even from here, I can see a few specks down in that lens that are internal. Uh, I'm going to just dismount that briefly here. I can see them down in there. Um, so um, look at my description for more about that. The focus is smooth, pretty smooth. Not quite as good as some. And I also notice that this this rubber ring here tends to still slip on here even at the at the extremes. So that's a very common thing with these Yashica lenses. These rubber uh, grips tend to expand a little bit and they don't fit real tight anymore. And so I mean it's still possible to use it, but just be aware that if you do keep turning, the grip keeps spinning free on the barrel. Uh, it's got some kind of number scratched in here. That's that's uh, something they used to do back in the 70s, I know, around here. Nice clicks on the uh, aperture. And uh, here, quick, quick snappy blades. I'm not going to be able to look through this real well right here. Well, maybe with this LED flashlight here. Let's open this up and I'm going to turn down my front light and look through there. I see what looks like specs. I don't see patches of fungus, but I see what looks like lots of little specks and some smudges, which I think are on the surface here. Yep, they are. So, uh, I would say it doesn't have fungus, but it has specks. And I don't see any haze that really lights up. It's just dust specks. So I'll turn the uh, light back on here. We will let's run the cycle here. With the lens off. That looks pretty good. Um, over here is where you set the ASA value, and I did not look exactly how you do that ahead of time. Oh, it looks like you press this button, maybe. Yeah. And then it looks like there's some way to uh, set exposure compensation. I'm not sure exactly how you do that. Um,
all of the uh, shutter speed dial works, the film advance works. If we pull up on the uh, film rewind crank, we can open it up and we can look in here, watch the shutter work, the film advance. Looking over here, I see lots of gummy material on the door edges. So it definitely needs light seals. This foam doesn't feel real healthy. This in here looks like it's printed off of here onto here. Um, so this camera needs light seals replaced at a minimum. The leatherette's bad. There's specks in the lens. There's markings on the lens. And I've not tested the meter for absolute accuracy. It does seem that the shutter basically works well, film transport works, but it's being declared for parts are not working because it needs uh, light seals and possibly other things. But I thought this would give at least a pretty good view of it and help you make the decision whether or not you want to buy it. Thank you.